tests as well that I just introduced. Um, but for right now, um, the two decks that are set up for us are the demo decks. They're just designed to kind of teach us how to play. Um, so my first question is, what do you prefer? Do you prefer villains or heroes? All right, cool. So you are on sitting in the correct, um, the correct chair. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to uh, go over the card types before I really get into kind of um, the core mechanics of the game. Um, so the main card, or the first card type that you're gonna, sure. we're going to talk about is the team leader card. Um, the team leader card is kind of sets the tone for your whole deck. It kind of sets everything up and kind of gives you your guide for kind of how you're going to be playing. Um, it gives you different abilities and effects, um, and we'll talk about those in a second. Uh, in the top left here, you have the health of the team leader. Uh, if that's ever reduced to zero, you lose the game. Um, so that's one of the ways to beat your opponent is to just, like, you know, attack them and deal them damage. Uh, the next thing here is the name of the team leader, and that's important. Well, I'll explain that um, when I talk about some other card types. Uh, this symbol right here, uh, it's a small symbol, but it's going to just dictate whether the villain or whether, whether the team leader is a villain or a hero. And that's important for deck building purposes. So when you build your own deck, uh, heroes can't go in villain decks and villains can't go in hero decks. Uh, this icon is the team that um, this team leader is part of, and that team is listed right here. So he is uh, the a leader for the demolition team. Uh, the next three sections are um, text uh, text boxes, and they're all going to have different things that you can do with them. The first one is a passive effect, so it's an effect that's always on, always available to you, uh, as long as you meet the requirements. Uh, even if the team leader ex is exhausted, indicating that you've used him and you can't use him again, the passive effect is still available to you. Uh, not not yourself. So um, it's he he refreshes a character, and he this card is a team leader. So there is a difference. I got you. Um, the second one is a payment effect. So if you notice this uh, number in here with the orange kind of uh, hexagon or square shape thing, um, not hexagon. It's like a it's like a I don't know some sort of gem. Yeah, sure. It's, it's a gem shape. It's a gem of some kind. Uh, so that's clout, and clout is our um, resource in the game. Um, so it's the thing that you use to pay for uh, objects and characters and things like that. Uh, in order to use that effect, you will track your clout uh, down um, to indicate that you're um, going to use that effect, and you turn the card to the side. Uh, we call that exhausting. Uh, indicating that you've used it for that effect. Uh, the last thing on there is a morality effect, and the morality effects are typically going to be heroism or villainy. Um, you'll see villainy 4 here, so this is not a cost, it's a requirement. So you've got uh, a morality scale, and this morality scale goes up and down, positive numbers, heroism, negative numbers is villainy. So it requires that you have at least 4 villainy, in order to utilize that effect, and in order to use it, you exhaust the team leader, and then you get to utilize that effect. Um, so, so essentially, you've got different effects you can do, uh, most of which you can only do um, once with your team leader until it refreshes again. Uh, the passive effect um, you can use even if it's exhausted. Uh, now, on the first turn for both of us, so your first turn and my first turn, we're in our secret hideouts. Uh, both of us are going to be in our secret hideouts during this time. Um, that just means that our team leaders can't take damage, they can't um, be used or be affected by um, different the different effects that might affect them in the game. So essentially, it just keeps us from killing each other on turn one. Sure, sure, I guess that makes sense. Um, so is this supposed to be 
covering up? Like, am I supposed to know who my opponent is, or is it? Yeah. So, so, so this is just in effect during the first turn of the game. So, when the game starts, you'll actually get to know who your opponent is. Some, uh, some team leaders actually have before the game begins effects. So, yes, you're you you are always going to know who you're up against, and that's important because um, the. In this game, if there's a villain versus a hero, the villain always goes first. If it's a hero versus hero or villain versus villain, uh, then you do a random roll-off. But villain versus hero, villain always goes first. Um, this right, These right here are just uh, different trackers. You're going to be keeping track of your resources. Left and right click, and it goes up and down. Uh, this... What? What did you say? I'm sorry. Yes. Okay, cool, cool. Uh, so this right here is um, the path card, and the path card is your secondary win condition and also a secondary loss condition. So um, it also gives you different effects on it. So it'll tell you uh, your secondary win condition here. This says win 40 villainy. So if you ever hit 40 villainy, you win the game. If you ever hit uh, 10 heroism, you lose the game. Now, uh, because this is a demo game, uh, we're going to cut in half the um, wit, the win conditions and the health values of our team leaders just to make the games go a little quicker. Uh, this right here is uh, what team the path can be used with. So this path can only be used with a team leader that has the demolition team. This is the name of the path. And then these right here are influence numbers. And those influence numbers are directly tied to effects that you unlock by taking control of locations. So if you look here in the top left, um, that is an influence value. And so if this location is in your control and it has a number on it that matches a number on your path card, you immediately unlock that effect on your path for use. And I'll explain, I'll explain how, uh, how you take control of locations momentarily. Uh, boons are all the resources in the game. So card draw, uh, clout, heroism, villainy, um, things of that nature. Uh, you can see all the boons on the back of this resource card over here. Uh, so if you just if you just wanted a way to reference it, um, this tells you all the different boons you can get. And then the last thing on there is a battle effect. So battle effects are effects that only can happen while the location is being contested. So while we're playing the game, we're going to be uh, battling over locations each turn. Um, and if a location is being contested, we get to utilize its battle effect. Now, sometimes the battle effect is going to be a passive effect that's just on and available. Sometimes the battle effect is going to be an action that you and I can you or you and I or you or I can take during the battle, and it'll tell you, tell us uh, what that action is uh, on the card. All right, so now let's talk about uh, the play deck and what comes in the play deck. I'm going to pull out a few different cards here. All right, so uh, in the if you uh, see here, there are two uh, two different card types that can be in your play deck. Uh, the first one is a character card. Uh, the character cards in the top left, you have the cost to put the card into play. Uh, you have the defense value, which is basic, or basically the health of the character. If uh, the character takes that much damage or more, they are defeated and moved to the landfill. Uh, the last uh, value is the attack value, and it is uh, basically the damage output that the character... Um, does when they attack. So if this character were to attack, he has a, an attack value of 1, so he would be attacking for 1. Uh, you have the name of the character up here. 
Uh, then, then you have these two little boxes. This one is the team affiliation that the character is part of. So some in-game effects have synergies that ba are based on the team that they're part of. Then you have whether they're, they're a hero or villain, which is important for deck construction. Then you have a basic effect box. And the basic effect uh, is an effect that happens when you put the card into play. So uh, immediately when you put the card into play, you, you may activate its basic effect if you so choose. Some basic effects are going to be uh, immediate actions. Some basic effects are going to be triggered effects. Um, but you can turn it on when you put it into play. Uh, most of the time they're optional, but sometimes they're mandatory like this one here. Uh, so this one you have to turn on, um, but most of the time they're optional. Uh, this box right here is a trait box, and tr the traits can be seen back here. Some traits have in-game effects that actually uh, affect the character, like Super Strength gives plus one to the attack value. Um, and other traits are just kind of thematic and tell the story of, of what the character is and can do. Uh, the last box on there is the morality effect. Uh, so just like on your team leader card, it'll say villainy, have a little box with possibly a number. If there's not a number in there, then it's, you know, you can do it no matter what your morality rating is. Uh, if there is a number in there, it's a requirement. So if it said villainy three, you would need three villainy in order to use it. In order to use it, during something we call the assemble sequence, you turn the card sideways, exhausting it, and then you get to utilize that effect. Now that's important because in this game, the battles are separated into sequences of three. So the first sequence is the assemble sequence. That's when we're gonna be playing characters, playing objects, taking actions. We're gonna be doing that back and forth. So you do something, then I do something, then you do something, then I do something. Uh, so if the character is exhausted because you chose to use its villainy effect, when we get to the attack sequence, uh, when it's your chance to declare an attack with a character, uh, you, you have to exhaust the character. So if they're already exhausted, uh, then you're not going to be able to attack with that character. Uh, the next uh, card type... Oh, so... Yeah, 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 okay. Uh, so the next card type in the play deck is the object cards. So you have the cost to play the object... You have the name of the object. Then you have defense and attack bonuses or penalties. So when you attach an object to a character, it will apply those, uh, what, whether they're bonuses or penalties to the character being they're being attached to. Uh, then you have object type, which is important because each character can only have one object type. In that case, uh, that's a, a gizmo. Uh, but you also have things like swords, which represent weapons and cars which represent vehicles. So each character can only have one object type attached to them. The first box is a basic effect box, so when you put the object into play attached to a character, you get to utilize it for the basic effect when you put it into play. Now some objects like this one have excess actions. So basically the way that this works is, let's say you play this card onto the firekin, that would be your action for, for that moment. Uh, so you would get to utilize the basic effect when you put it into play. So then it comes back to me. Then when it gets back to you, as an action, you can use an excess action on an object, and it'll tell you how to use it or, or what it does. Does that make sense? Cool. Uh, this blue box is a trait requirement. So if we look over here at the energy disruptor, if there is a trait showing uh, in the blue box, it means that the character you're attaching it to has to have that trait. So you can't attach the energy disruptor to the firekin, but you can attach it to Professor Furnace. Um, so let's talk about Professor Furnace. So remember when I said there was one last thing you could do with your team leader um, based on the name. So you notice his name is Professor Furnace and his name is Professor Furnace. So in the game, you can do something called jumping in. So you can exhaust your team leader to put a character that shares a name with it into play for zero cost, effectively making it free. Um, so that you can jump in as an action. So normally team leaders effects are kind of like instants and in magic. Um, they can interrupt anything. They don't count as an action. You can use them whenever you want. Um, jumping in is an action because you're putting a character into play. So, so I just, my, my friends had a question here. So, is there like a specific phase, like 
when we're playing cards, or like when this happened during the combat? Yeah, so the way that it, it works is um, at the beginning of a turn, the active player goes through all the all the reset stuff, and you can follow that follow along with that over here. Um, and then you attempt to control or secure a location. When you do that, and this is that's going to happen every turn. Uh, when you do that, and you pick a location to go after, then we go into a battle. When we get into the battle, is when we're going to be taking actions, playing cards, playing characters, playing objects. Um, using location effects, so that's called the assemble. That's called the assemble sequence in a battle. Then we go to the attack sequence, and I'll explain the attack sequence in a moment. I got it. Um, and and this will make more sense once we get into the actual demo game. You'll 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 pick it up. Uh, okay, so that's jumping in. Um, so let's talk about some of these traits real quick. Uh, if you look here at this character, uh, that has the, something called the generic trait. So in this game, uh, generics ignore the law of one. So the law of one states that you can only ever have one character in play that has that name. So you can only have one Professor Furnace. So you can only have one Dizzy. But um, you can have as many Firekin in play at any given time as you want because they ignore the law of one. Makes sense. Um, uh, what'd you say? I'm sorry. They're like a little army guy, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like they're like the little guys that uh, swarm things. Uh, they they actually have uh, something that they can do in the game called ganging up. So they can attack um, multiples of them can attack one character or can attack together, basically. Let me find one last thing in here. Oh, not that one. All right, so on this character, uh, you can see she has a trait that says sidekick. So sidekicks are um, interesting in that they can be played as characters like normal, or they can attach to characters as if they were objects. So they have the if you would do that, they have the object type sidekick. Uh, their defense and attack bonuses uh, apply to the character as if they were objects. So like the one becomes a plus one. Uh, their basic effect still applies as normal, but their morality effect then becomes an excess action. So, unlike characters that have to exhaust to use their villainy effects, um, sidekicks get to use it as an excess action because they're attached to a character as if they were an object. So, um, sidekicks are pretty interesting because uh, they offer a different kind of thing that they can do. Uh, and then I think the last thing I need to explain before going into combat is this effect here. So if you see, she does something called juicing. So juicing is the most powerful thing you can do in the game, uh, period. It, it, it is literally the most powerful thing you can do in the game. Um, it gives bonuses to defense, attack, and any values in the text boxes that have pink backers. So you'll see on the characters, they all have these little pink backers in their text boxes. Um, all those things get increased by being juiced. So juicing is, is the most powerful thing in the game you can do. So when it says the next Blade Wave Blaster is juiced plus two, Blade Blade laser is plus two. That's referring to a specific ability card. Yeah, it's referring to an object card. So, so it's a it's a weapon. Here, I'll just pull it out of your deck here. Up, oh, that's yeah. not it. What are you doing? Sorry, uh, I'm like clicking the card and it's dragging other cards out. Yeah. Uh, so it's this card okay. here. So oh. when she juices it, it increases both the defense bonus, the attack bonus, and this pink backed number. Oh, all the numbers. Yeah, it it increases defense, uh, attack, and the pink backed numbers. Okay. I thought you had to choose one. Okay, wow. Oh no, yeah, like no, no, it does all of them. So juicing is, is the most powerful thing you can do. Attack, defense, and that pink number. So, 
All right, so now let's talk about um, the attack sequence for a second. So let's assume that you've got Professor Furnace in play, and he's got the Flame Wave Blazer attached. Um, so his basic effect says that he gets plus two attack while he has an object, so he would be at five attack value, right? Yep. Let me go find a character here. And let's say I've got... Um, this uh, fading memories in play. Uh, the active player, the, the player that chose the location to go after, uh, the active player gets the first opportunity to declare an attacker. So in this case, if you're the active player, um, when you go to attack, you exhaust the character that you want to attack with. So he's got a five attack value. Uh, they always attack against slot one uh, unless they have targeted attacks. Um, but if you don't do a targeted attack, you get a special um, attack effect called splash damage. And so in this case, you've got five attack coming against my one defense. So I'm going to absorb one of your five attack. Then there's four attack remaining. So the remaining attacks are going to look in slot two and three and four for an extra character. So if there's not an extra character, it's going to go to my team leader. So that's how you deal damage to my team leader. Um, so yeah, uh, then yeah, so, uh, you're going to be deploying, uh, into slot one first, then slot two, then slot three, but because you're choosing how you're, you know, paying for your cards, you're basically order getting to, what? Right. The, the order in which you play them will determine what slots they go in. I can't just intentionally play a guy in slot three and my first act. Correct, yeah, they, they always go in slot one. And the first action in the assemble sequence is always going to be to play a character for both players. Um, so no matter what, we can't like, you, you can't like um, fake me out and not play a character. Um, if, if that happens and you don't have a character, there is a penalty for that. Typically that's not going to happen, uh, but there is a penalty if, uh, if it comes up, I'll kind of discuss it more. Uh, so at this point, let's uh, let's say that the attack sequence this has happened, um, and there's no no further attackers remaining, right? So you've taken my guy out, um, and you have your character remaining. You don't have any other attackers. Uh, then we go to battle resolution. So battle resolution is determines the winner of the battle. The winner of the battle is the player that has the most defense remaining in the battle. So in this case, you've got one defense. I have no defense. Um, so you would win this battle. So let's assume that before the combat started, this was on your open zone location. Uh, you move any location that you choose to your contested zone, and then at the end of a battle, at battle resolution, if you won the battle and you own this location, you move it into your controlled zone. So you can move it into any three of any of these open controlled zones. Uh, if you we're attempting to secure the location, and securing the location is when you go after my locations. Uh, you would move it into the secured zone. So if I own it, you move it into your secured zone. If you own it, you move it into your controlled zone. Uh, and that's how you take control of locations or secure them. Now, if you were defending, um, and this was contested, you would get to choose whether this location moves back to the zone it came from, or gets replaced by the top card of the location deck. And so this would go to the bottom of the location deck. So that's the benefit to defending, is you can kind of control what location uh, is in play. And then other than, other than the, the, green, the green icons that, that determine which abilities you want, is there any other reason to control different locations? So like this, is, this has a number one on it, and at least none of my abilities reference the number one. Yep. So like, I, I don't prioritize this one as much Correct. based on what I'm Yeah, so ones, ones are typically the weakest we, weakest influence value locations. They're going to be the locations that give you the least amount of resources. Um, so ones are not the best, right? But uh, when you're building your decks, you have to have at least two uh, one rank locations in your deck. And when you're deck building, you know each path is going to be different. So some paths actually have different values. Yeah. Uh, that's good. I like 
everything else, I think I can probably discuss as we play. If you if you are ready to give the game a go. Yeah, yeah, sounds great. Um. All right. So if yeah, you want to just shuffle up, I will shuffle up as well. Um, so before we get started, um, the villain deck is more prioritized for damage and defeating the opponent through attacking me. Uh, that doesn't mean that you can't do win through villainy. It just means that you're more focused on winning through attack. My deck is more focused sure. on winning through heroism. Uh, that doesn't mean I can't beat you up. It just means that I'm more focused on that. So just keep that in mind as we're playing. Maybe that, that will influence your decisions. Now on the first round of each uh, each of our first turns, we're in our secret hideouts, so you can't you know kill me outright anyway. So just bear that in mind. I am going to turn turns on, so when we get to the um, battles, uh, it'll make more sense as we're taking actions. Um, so the first thing we need to do bef before... What? Go ahead, sorry. The villain goes first? Yeah, the villain will go first. You'll, you will start us off as the active player. Uh, the first thing that both of us need to do is move the top card of our location deck to the open zone. Face up or face down? Uh, technically face down. Um, so now if you go over here to the turn sequence and walk down the start of turn, you can kind of walk through those and do them as we go. Okay. So do I have a hand size to start with? Yep. Uh, just uh, if you walk down the turn sequence, you'll get there. Okay, sorry. So gain 10 clock. Okay, draw up the card. I see them. Gain up. I don't know why I would want less than 10 clubs, but I'm sure there's a reason. Um, so this is my, my resource that I already said. No, uh, so, so actually, let's clarify that. Uh, you would never want under your maximum clout. Uh, it's telling you that in case you have clout left over. So if you have two clout left over for the end of a, oh, for the end of a turn, um, then instead of going from 2 to 12, you would go 2 to 10. So it's up to 10. I uh, I got you, I got you. Uh, you can't carry over the previous Correct, yeah. Uh, and that's an, a, another important aspect to this game. So, uh, do you play many CCGs or uh, yeah, TCG-style yeah, games? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, a big thing with most CCG and TCG-style games is that things stay in play. Um, that's a, We have a huge difference in this because you're, gonna, you, you're never going to be mana screwed because you're always going to have, at minimum, 10 clout but also nothing stays in play. So the characters and objects you play are actually going to wipe away from the the game state at the end of the, the turn. Okay. So, loca so locations will stay in play, but... Correct, yep. So we're going to be resetting every turn. So uh, you really want to maximize um, how much you play during a turn, but sometimes it's more advantageous to hold on to a card in case you want to wait till I'm out of my secret hideout to deal me a really big hit or something. But usually you want to uh, maximize your output every turn. I've got you. Okay. So I can draw six cards? Yep. You, you Up to six cards. Now that's important because if you have cards remaining. Um, right. So if you hover over your deck and hit a number on your keypad, you will draw that many cards. Oh, that's okay. Now, there is a mulligan in this game. Um, so if you uh, don't have a character in your hand, let me know and we'll do the mulligan. Uh, otherwise, we won't worry about it. We'll just walk through. Okay, cool. So now if you just want to keep walking down the, uh, the turn sequence, I don't think there's much left except the very last thing. Okay, so there's nothing controlled right, for anybody. Yep. Yep. All right. So now is when we go into the attempt to control or secure. So now you, as the active player, are going to get to choose a location to go after. So if you choose yours, you're attempting to control it. If you choose mine, you're attempting to secure it. 
uh, going after a location that is at an open zone costs one clout. Now, if there was a location on a secured zone that you wanted to go after, that would cost two clout. So that's one benefit to securing your opponent's location is it makes it require more um, resource investment to go after it. Into this game, but right now it feels like my choice is to. Well, I guess I don't know what this symbol is here. What, uh, so the back. Is yep. Gain one villainy. That that is. Uh, that one is villainy or heroism. Oh, villainy or heroism. Yeah, I see it. Um. If you own it, so like like, yeah. So I can't actually use that one, um, but if you look at this one, uh, when we go into battle, uh, this battle effect lets either of us uh, use its effect as an action. So this one says owned. This one just says uh, if you have a team leader that's part of one of these teams. It would take your. It would take your. It would take your action. During during the, the, the assembly phase. Yep. So during during the assemble phase, you and I are just going to be taking actions back and forth. So you're going to do something. I'm going to be doing something. The first time a player passes, the other player can continue taking actions as much as they want. Um, then, when both players are done taking all actions during the assemble sequence, is when we move to the attack sequence. Okay, but it's not like you can't come back in. And- Correct. Yeah. Once you pass, you you have determined that you are done with the assemble sequence. I got you. I got you. And our cards we play are face up. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, now there are you you have cards in your deck that will play cards from your deck face down, and it tells you what they are when you do that. Uh, my deck actually has effects that that make my characters hidden. Uh, hidden characters are actually. They take up the slot, they still have their name, uh, but they ignore attacks, um, they don't have defense values at the end of the turn. So essentially, like, hidden is something that kind of, it, it keeps you from being able to destroy it, but at the same time, it's, you know, taking up a slot for me and doesn't help me after it becomes hidden. Um, so you'll, you'll see hidden things as well. Um, but yeah. Yep, and no, no matter what you pick, because both locations are at open zones, it's going to cost one clout. Right, so I'll go after the, the hover car. Okay, so uh, when you choose a location, just move it to your contested zone. Right. And then you're going to get to start us off in the assemble sequence, so you're going to get to uh, be the first player to play a character into your slot one. Okay, and she's going to let you search for a gizmo or the flame wave blazer. Now, gizmos are the objects that have joysticks. Uh, would you say? I'm sorry. If um, if if I wanted to play her as an attachment, she's a sidekick. Does she also need to have the does the person attaching it also have to have that gear icon? Uh, no. So sidekicks no. do not require. Uh, the, the, so she has the yellow box. Uh, so she actually doesn't have requirements. Okay. Gotcha. If 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 a sidekick did have a requirement, it would be in the basic effect uh, passive area. Cool. And I can just put this in my 
You get to put that in your hand at any any time an effect um, has you look in your deck, you always reshuffle afterwards. Gosh, All right, so oh, let me actually turn. I thought I turned. Oh, yeah, I did. Okay, so in the middle of your screen, do you see the... Yeah, cool. All right, I'm going to play a Fading Memories. Uh, I do have a uh, mandatory basic effect. So my mandatory basic effect says that the next action that I take must be to utilize my heroism effect. Um, so it doesn't give me a choice. I have to do that. Um, so can I play attachments on your characters? Uh, not unless the object tells you you can. Uh, if you're asking about the, I think it's like energy disruptor or something like that, um, that card you play on your character and then you target my character. So that would be like an excess action? No, no, no. Uh, so the the big gray area is the basic effect. So oh, when you gotcha, when, gotcha. when you play the card into the battle, you get to do that effect. So you're attaching it to your person, and then thematically your person is using that against me. So it's a little bit Yeah, well, I, can't, I could play it. He has just the group, right? And then he wouldn't be able to do his terrorism again, right? So I could spend one. Right. Yep. So, so then. One, and then now you can't do his. Well, it says you have to, but I guess that you can't. It says it says uh, I must activate this card's heroism effect below if able. So I am not now able. Gotcha. And then that's much. All right, I'm going to spend another one to play another Fading Memories. Yep. So... So, if I play the Flame Laser on her, um... Would she be able to use its ability if she wanted to do the juicing effect? Yeah, so so uh, you would just time it. So basically you would use her villainy effect and then play it uh, attached to her. Right, right. So, so I'll do that. I will exhaust her yep. as my action. Yep. And it doesn't require that I have any ability. You got it. And then... Now my next Playboy Blazer is Yep, exactly. Yeah, well, yeah, I presume so, right? You have to tap them to use the, the ability ability. Yes. Yep, because uh, it's a choice you make. Do you want to use their villainy or do you want to attack with them? Now, she can't attack no matter what, so you might as well just use her villainy effect. Okay. That's so now you have to do this guy's ability again. Yep. So he's going to exhaust to use his uh, heroism, and then he becomes hidden. So when a character becomes hidden, they flip over and they refresh, and then they just kind of take up the slot. Um, and they ignore everything else, basically, unless a card allows them... Yeah, yeah. So if I have, I, you know, I have a card in my deck that lets them come out of hidden and things like that. Up at the end as well. Yep. Yep. Everything everything clears from the board. So it's giving me 
plus stats that don't really matter on this turn. You can't pack it. Uh, it does give you defense. It gives you extra defense. Oop, sorry. I, yeah, it, it came into my hand. I actually, I accidentally hit the wrong button. Okay, so that, that's a very good question. Uh, if you are playing cards from your hand, uh, you cannot go beyond slot 5. If an action puts characters into play, they can create phantom slots. So I, okay, so I probably want to play the fire kin in my hand first before I play this one. Possibly. I mean, it's really up to you. So if you play the fire kin and then you use this, the fire kin is going... It's its uh, basic effect is going to activate. Um, so that's really up to you, the order that you play things, and if you want it, want it out beforehand. Is there a reason why I wouldn't like, wouldn't want to get his ability effect this turn? Right? Oh, uh, yeah, absolutely. If that's what you want to, if that's, if that's what you would want to do, go for it. Like, uh, if, if I, now if I have a big character in play, I might be able to wipe your board out, right? Like, so... It's really, really a, a strategic. No, no, we can attack. Oh, sorry, I'm sorry. We just can't deal damage to the team leader. Correct. Okay, okay, yep. Okay, I, I, I see. Uh, okay, so you're saying that I can't attack. Yeah, because remember, at the end, battle resolution is determined by the remaining defense in play. So, uh, if I have something that I can attack with, I could still win this battle. Right. Right. Okay. So, so I'm not going to do that then. I'm not going to do that. I'm sorry. I'm going to, instead of playing this guy, I would play uh, the Bale Wolf okay. instead of that guy. So that guy um, cost me three instead of four, so I really have four left. Sure. And he lets you. That. Yeah, no problem. You're, you're learning the game. I appreciate that. Yeah, okay. So reveal the top three cards of my deck, and I get any fire kit and put them in my hand, and the rest go in my land. Uh, not in your hand, they actually go into play. Oh, jeez. Okay, wow, even better. Okay, I didn't get any, but, uh, nice try. They go, That was my, my action, and now it's... Sorry about that. Oh, it's okay. Uh, all right, I'm going to play... Someone else gets all the credit. Uh, whenever... Oh, dang it. Sorry. My uh, my mouse is very slow for some reason. All right, here we go. Someone else gets all the credit, so when I play him, I gain one heroism. So, so now I will spend four um, to play the flame cannon. Sure. And make the all this tokens. Which is my last four. This is a weapon. See, this is a gadget. See, oh, see this is the weapon. That would look cool. Oh, yeah. This one has a. This one has a oh, yeah. yeah. So that's the top. So then I put the top. You can't have another one. Yeah, you can't. That's, that's, that's simple. Basically, like showing you what location. Uh, and I don't know. I mean, that's a good question, I guess. If you, if you have a, uh, like an equipment already on in one location, could I put a different one in the same location and get rid of the other one? Uh, negative. 
So like if, if I if I had another energy disruptor, I wouldn't have been able to play that as like a different energy disruptor to stop that guy from creating power or dirt. But now, you, uh, sorry, uh, so objects are not affected by the law of one. So it, if you had an object here um, in this slot, you could play it into this slot as long as you meet the requirements. A is that what you were asking? Or were you asking, like, could I play another energy s disruptor? Yeah, that's kind of the question. Like, 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 could she play a second energy disruptor over top of the first? Right. So you, you you can't do that. But if you have two characters in play that can attach this this the object, you can have two of the same objects in play. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. So now I get to take the top four cards of my deck and put that face down on it. Yeah, I see okay. So top four cards of my deck face down. Guys. Yep, and uh, you said that it, that, that it, like, it creates like a phantom slot. Yep, phantom slot six. exactly. Uh, now, another question that a lot of people bring up in this uh, is they have two attack and zero defense, right? So, in this game, they actually have to receive some type of damage in order to be discarded. So, characters can have zero defense. Um, and stay in the board, and unless if they take damage, you know, the splash damage will just wipe right through them. Um, but wow. for the moment, they kind of just stay there. Uh, and they, they, don't, they don't generate anything for controlling the Yeah, because zero defense doesn't give you any benefit. Um, right. the other thing is, unlike like magic, uh, or let's see, what's another good example, like Hearthstone. Uh, where things, like, when you go to attack me, my attack value doesn't matter when you're attacking me. Because you and I are going to be going back and forth, so, like, you attack, then I attack. Because we're not turn-based. So, when you attack, you're attacking only against my defense. You don't have to worry about my attack value. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, and then it's your turn. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm going to use someone else gets all the credits uh, morality effect. Uh, heroism says gain one heroism. So as soon as I activate that, I'm going to gain one here. And then this one will trigger as well, giving me the plus two. So I'll gain another two. Yep, so he's going to target himself, but he becomes hidden, so it doesn't matter. No, he, he because it says under it doesn't say the full understudy, so he couldn't target that one. Oh, okay. I thought I, I see. I, I, I guess he's like it's like kind of like a let me joke with that. Okay, yeah. So thematically, this character he has basically any power you can think of, but people don't remember him. They remember somebody else doing the deeds that he did. So he's he's always the understudy. He's all, he's never remembered. I see. Okay, well I'm out of here. I uh, I'm out of uh, cloud, so I guess I will be passing on until you are done. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, you do you and did. I I have six abilities to use that guy's ability. But you also have you also have the location effect if you wanted to do that before you pass. Oh right, I could do that. Um, Okay, sure. Cool. All right, uh, so now it's to me. Uh, your board state is pretty mean, so I'm actually going to pass because I know you can't deal damage to my team leader. Uh, so I will send it to you for the first opportunity to declare an attack. Right. Um, yeah, so all this power isn't really super helpful right now, but 
it, this would have been a lot more powerful if, if I was trying to go after your, your health. Absolutely. So probably, probably over a minute here on my first attack. So, but it's but, okay. But you so, definitely, you definitely are going to win the location for sure. Yes, if you're not wrong. <laughs> okay, so I will attack with my first guy here that has looks like four plus one attack for the uh, super strength. Yep. So uh, he's going to absorb one. Four remaining is just going to wipe it, go down my slots. Uh, so I don't have anybody to attack with. So it then goes back to you, and. Um, okay. You don't have anybody to actually deal damage to, so we'll just jump to battle resolution. You win this battle, no, no questions. Yep. Um, uh, this is going to go to my controlled area now, right? Yep. Uh, and then presumably, um, if I go through my deck, I reshuffle. Yeah, uh, there is a penalty in the main game because in this uh, we're actually playing with reduced deck sizes. Uh, in the main game, if okay. you do that, um, you lose three clout just immediately, and you lose three clout from your clout total. So when you refresh, you if you have 10 clout total, you go down to 7, and then you'll go down to 4 uh, every, time you ref or every time you have to refresh. Wow, okay. okay. So don't go through your deck. Yeah, I mean, it, it's not an insta-loss like magic, but uh, it, there is a penalty. Gotcha. Um, and then, is the deck, yeah, how big is the deck size in the actual? Uh, 40, 40 cards in the regular deck. Uh, in this, you're only playing with half that, so... Okay. So that was the first turn, and then presumably it is now third turn. Um, yep. Right. Uh, the uh, the other thing that we need to do at the end of the turn is you may discard any cards from your hand that you so choose. So you don't have to keep your hand; you can discard cards from it, or you can keep your cards. Either way. Uh, the other thing that needs to happen is because an open zone location is now empty, the owner of the empty open zone needs to replace it with the top card of their location deck. Gotcha. Face up or down? Um, technically, it comes into play face down because at the end of the turn sequence, we'll turn it face up. Uh, but to save time, okay. you can just turn it face up. It's, it says it get turned face up so this spot right here. Yep. All right, so now the active player marker moves to me. So now I'm going to start back over. Uh, I don't have to refresh my team leader, gain up to 10 clout. So now my seven is going to go to 10, and yours is also going to go to 10. Uh, both players are going to draw up to six cards, so I'm going to draw five. Uh, active player may gain boons from controlled zone locations. I don't have a controlled zone location. Inactive player may gain boons from secured location, and you don't have anything there. Um, so now we turn open zone locations face up. All right. Yeah, correct. So um, I can do this one to gain two villain, right? Uh, so you are not the active player. You'll get to do that when you become active player again. So if you look at the turn sequence, it says uh, active player may gain boons from controlled locations. Gotcha, gotcha. So, so the benefit, so the benefit it, it, with secured locations is you get boons from them when you're not active. I gotcha, I gotcha. So, so on my turn, I'll get. Yep, exactly. All right, so I'm going to choose um, your team base uh, as my. Uh, zone that I'm going to attempt to secure. Uh, if you look here, uh, this I or that number is a wild card. So if you take that card into your controlled zone, you get to choose what value it represents when you put it into your controlled zone. So team bases are the strongest locations in your location deck. I got you. It also looks like he picks a lot of. 
Yep. Yep, they are the best locations in your location deck. Uh, so I'm going to try to keep you from getting that. So I, I would like to attempt to secure it. So I'm going to start us off. Yep. Exactly. All right, so I'm going to start us off. I want to play a Fading Memories. I think you've seen this guy a few times, so I'll pass it to you. It'll cost you the two. Yeah, because you can't use your right. But I just can't play him for free. Right. Exactly. Yeah. He costs. He 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 has a cost value, so you can still play him. You just can't play him for free. I didn't play him for free. Oh, okay. so I can still play him for free. So if you can, there's one of the things that you can jump into battle. I can't do it. I can't do it on the first turn. I don't think. I don't think Rodriguez. Really but it's not the first turn. You can exhaust your hero, play your hero with the same thing. Uh, yeah, so I'm just going to uh, play a fire kit for one cloud. Cool. Basic, if you play another fire kit, turn this card sideways. Uh, sort of. Uh, if you look back here, there's a token to represent rubble. Uh, the okay. the uh, location keeps its influence value, but it loses any boons. Gotcha. So, if I were to destroy my own thing, that probably... Well, I guess it would stop you from getting it, too. If I thought I was going to lose, I could do that to just make it so that it got destroyed. Yep. You could do that. All right. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't hit your turn, right? All right, so I'm going to um, use my heroism effect, and I will send it back to you. Yeah. Which you have, right? Because I have to, yep. And now you have four heroism. Right? Uh, I do currently have four. If, I, if any player activates a heroism effect, so not villainy, but heroism, I'll gain another two. Oh, okay. So if I were to gain heroism, you could increase your heroism. Yeah, so what if... If you had a character that had a heroism effect and you used that effect, then it would trigger my activation. Or trigger my reaction thing. Which, sorry, which reaction? Uh, that my hair, my uh, heroism effect, it's just waiting for someone to use a, a heroism. Yeah, exactly. So, so, exactly. So, if I played an, if I didn't play another character and you didn't use a heroism effect, then I would gain nothing. So, if you're playing two heroes against each other, this like you could actually potentially be giving them heroism. No, they would be giving me heroism if they used a heroism effect. Next time, oh, you gain. Okay, I see. I got you. I, 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 I Okay, sorry. It's okay. Um, okay, so I will play Professor Furness for two. Okay. So he's just waiting for you to give him an object. Then he'll get bigger, yes. No signal is detected. 
All right, I'm going to play Someone Else Gets All the Credit, and I will gain a heroism. Uh, no, because his basic effect is what I'm using right now. So I haven't used the heroism effect, I've just used a basic effect. Gotcha, gotcha. So what if you were to use his heroism? Yep. Then you'd be... You got it. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I can look at the top part of a location deck, and I can put it on the top. I may put it on the bottom. Of it. So I will. I guess I'll look at your. Sure. Just because I won't be revealing this one, so I'll look. I'll, um, so I guess I just drag this off here. Search. I think it's Alt Shift. I'll, I'll put that one on the bottom. Okay. All right. Uh, I will go ahead and let's uh, spend three, and we're going to use "You Forgot My Name." It's understudy. So he's just waiting on a trigger. That trigger is if another character is played. Uh, he becomes plus two juiced. Gotcha. All right. Uh, so I will use um, another cloud play another fire kit. Okay. So it costs me one. So it says when you play this fire kit. Play another fire kit, it immediately exhausts and activates the building. Yep. So this so, this one will trigger now. This one. It exhausts it, guys. It still absorb damage. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The only ones that won't absorb damage are hidden. So exhausted guys still absorb damage. Gotcha. Okay. And then it is back. All right. I'm going to. Uh, we're going to use his heroism effect. So I will immediately gain three, one from his effect and then two from this one's effect. And he is going to uh, target this one for plus one juice. Okay. 
Okay. All right, minus one attack. Uh, I'm going to use the Demo Cosm's uh, battle effect to give Professor Furnace minus one defense, and I will gain a heroism. Oh, not that one. Oh, okay. Uh, I guess I didn't realize that. Okay. I guess I'll use that ability against your guy as well. Okay. So, uh, then I gain an ability for that? Yep, you sure will. Okay, and then you have minus one defense. Okay. Um... Ch -ch -ch -ch. I will go ahead and use, you forgot my name's heroism effect, so I will gain two heroism, and for each card, uh, so for each card I um, turn face up, so I'll turn, uh, we'll turn both of these face up, I'll gain two heroism, and I can make this guy become... Hidden, I don't think I'll do that. I think I'll just leave him. Leave him where he is. Gotcha. Yeah, we're in trouble. Alright, I will spend one. And I will play another fire king. Okay. And that... Oh. That can also yes. trigger your path, I believe, if you want it to. My what? Your path. Oh, uh, right. If I have three firekin in play or in the landfill, I gain five. So I go to negative nine. And I also guess I get one more as well for this guy. Yep. Right? Um, and then this says if at least two other fire can have activated, turn yep. into rubble. Yep. So I'll, only two activated so far, so I haven't done it yet. Correct. Yes. Any more? Exactly. You got it. Okay. And then that's back to you. All right. I'm going to spend one. No. Yeah. Yeah. We'll spend one, and we're going to put. Uh, night vision goggles into play, and I'm going to look at the top card of my location deck. Uh, that can stay where it is. Okay. Um, well, it looks like I'm going to lose this fight. Uh, you, you get to attack first. Right? I do, yep. Yeah. So you and you can pick to not attack with the slot one first. Correct. Right? Yeah. You, when you when you declare attackers, you get to choose uh, which one attacks first. The only difference is they attack. They always attack slot one. So I think I'm going to lose this fight. So I feel like I should just activate the ability effect for this fire kit and burn and make it rubble. All right. So we've got some rubble. So I gain one uh, uh, ability as well, and it's now rubble. So, so because I don't want you to have all those boons going into my turn. Yeah, viable. Like gonna... Absolutely viable uh, strategy. Uh, as my action, I'm going to uh, turn off the lights and give uh, Professor Furnace minus one attack. Okay. Well, I guess since he basically is pretty useless now, I'm going to use his ability effect here to gain two more. And until the end of the battle, even if this card is discarded, when a character you control is defeated before battle resolution, you have one damage that cannot be removed. Yep. So that's a, a a way to actually deal damage to me before battle uh, before uh, the attack sequence starts. If I start like 
taken off your people, or during the attack sequence, you can take me out uh, on my first attack, or you know, whatever. Presumably, there's effects that can do like direct damage to allies and stuff, and do characters and stuff as well. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, uh, if you if you uh, give a peek to your team leaders, uh, villainy effect actually. And then it's back to you. Yep. Um, at this point, I am just going to pass. Yeah, because you pretty much got this one locked up. So, uh, I guess I will play another fire kit. Okay, fair. Uh, and that cost me another cloud. And then I'll use his ability to gain one more ability. Yep. And then I'm out of cards and... That's all I can do. Yep. So uh, we will go to uh, the attack sequence. Now, the question is, do I want to attack? I currently have, what is this, uh, three, four, five, four, five, six, and you have one, two, three, four. Uh, I'll just pass. But you can just choose not to attack? Yeah, you can, you can choose not to attack. Okay. Uh, so battle resolution... What? I'm sorry? So you have, yeah, so you have one, two, three, four, five, right? Uh, you gave me minus one, so four. You have one, two, three, four, and then he's got minus one as well, so you've got... Wait, uh, five, four, five, so I've got six. Yeah, so what happens if it's a tie? Uh, ties always go to the active player. Uh, well, in this case, uh, maybe I don't want to attack because you have your Professor Furnace activated, and if I were to attack, I have the possibility of actually losing the fight because you might be able to wipe my board with your effect. Um, oh, I see, I see. Okay, so more battle resolution. I got you, I see. Okay. That's why. I, I misunderstood this. I, I thought that battle resolution was like... I thought when we started declaring attacks, that was part of battle resolution. Oh, no, no, that, that's the attack sequence. That's actually the the middle sequence. So then this is assembly, then it's attacking, and then it's battle resolution. Exactly, yep. So you didn't want to attack because you would have potentially taken damage on your guys for killing my guys, and it, then I could have Yeah, exactly. Okay, cool. So you get to put that rubble one in the secure location. Yeah. Yep. And I, guess get to as well. I get well, no, because uh, you you get to do that when you take control of it. So I actually don't get to choose the influence value because uh, secured locations don't affect my path card. So it the influence value okay. doesn't matter there. Okay. So then these can then we okay so we can go to the uh, the end of turn sequence right where we clear all the cards. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. You can. So, if you had cards in your hand, you could discard them, and then after this turn, we are now going to be out of our secret hideouts. Right. right. Uh, delete all those. Or don't delete. I was deleted. Okay, I think I wasn't promoted. I would that. Uh, So I only have two cards remaining in my deck, so I presumably draw those last two cards, yep. and then like, uh, I would have to reshuffle if I would. Yep, and then you'll just draw the remaining. Alright, uh, so two, and then I will put over, and shuffle. And if you want to drag the top card of your location deck to your open zone. Right. 
The Torn Reality Monument. Oh, okay. Mon uh, that's a so this is an example of a location that has a passive effect on it. So, um, or it says ongoing. So that is something that's available to me as the demo as a demo team player. The bottom was is an action that's available to you as a demolition player. Yep. So now, now we have full access to our team leaders and everything that they can do. So, once for battle, you can refresh character. Next, you fire character. Fire character. All characters. So this is another ability as well that would do damage, like as an action that I can act. Right? Yeah, it's uh, it do, it's not an action. So you just use it, and then you still you, you would still have your action available to you. So team leaders are are, are like instants; they can interrupt anything oh, wow. at any time. I see. Okay. Wow. Uh, the the I path card the yeah. path cards are the same way. So like. If there's something on here that you could do during your turn, it's like an instant effect, so it doesn't take an action to do it unless it says so. Gotcha. Okay, so we're going back through the rest of the, the start of the turn phase, right? Yep. So I gain my turn, um, go to the six. Active player can gain wound, so I guess I can gain two ability. Uh, yep. So it must be to 16. And then... You would get this, but because it's rubble, there's nothing on it. Exactly, yep. And then, now I have to choose to go the place to go after. Uh, I think I want to go after the, on my one, the torn reality. Uh, on All right. So that'll so cost, cost more. yep. And you get to start us off. All right, let's look at this hand. I have to see uh, Alright, so I will play Izzy again. Okay. For one. And I will go search for a gun. Find it. That's right. Oh, that's right. I was like, I'll think it's in my head. I thought I found it. All right, uh, I will play a Fading Memories. Oh, why is it? No, don't do that. There we go. Uh, so to answer that question, there is a team uh, that actually has uh, cards in, in within that team's framework that allow it to destroy locations anywhere. Oh, that's cool. That's yeah, it's a uh, so it's it's called the Sands of Time. It's actually a big giant alien ship that's attacking the city. Okay. 
down to seven. I will use my heroism effect on my fading memories. Go back to you. I have to, yeah. It's not an option. Uh, I will spend another one. Play another fire. Cool. And that will make this guy exhaust. And I will gain a villain. Which means to negative seven. I will spend one and I will put a fading memories into play. If my hand will actually let me grab the card. There we go. Uh, so I will use the uh, uh, action on here. Okay. To search in landfill local for deck from fire is that once per turn? It doesn't say yeah. once per turn. I just uh, all, all effects in battle are once per turn unless otherwise noted. Okay. I assume that was the case. Now, do I have to pay the cloud to bring this guy out? It just says what it is. Nope, thing. nope. It's well, just a, it, it, it's a portal to another dimension that's just giving you one for free. Okay. But I, do I still get to do his basic ability when he comes into play? Yeah, uh, you have to because it's mandatory. Right, right, right. So I exhaust him and I gain another minus one ability. Then it's back to you. Alright, so this guy has to use his heroism effect, which will give me two heroism. Back to you. Okay, so if I use Izzy here, uh, gain two ability. That would put me at minus 20. Yep, and then you would win the demo game. Right. I mean, that happens immediately, too. There's not, like, a... Like a yeah, so, yeah, so, yeah, there's no there's no way for me to get around it. It's just you're trying to to meet that value, and if you hit that value, you win. Interesting, okay. So, so it's funny, because you said that normally this deck does damage. I saw how much damage I could have put out on the first turn. But because I wasted it all on the first attack when I wasn't allowed to do damage, I kind of had to, like, audible, I guess, because I wasn't really doing anything otherwise. Yeah, and, you know, uh, so it's a demo It's it's a demo game, so, uh, you know, like, just figuring it out and, like, learning how, how you're going to, you know, go through it and learning all the, all the characters and all the cards and stuff. So, yeah, that was awesome. Um, yeah, that's, that's cool. Um, what um, what would you say like the typical like turn length for like a normal like non demo game? Like, yeah, like, uh, you said like, a shorter game, obviously. Yeah, so the uh, so tabletop simulator plus demo game equals much longer. Um, if you know the cards uh, and you've played before, games typically last between fifteen minutes to forty five minutes, depending on the play styles of the decks. Uh, and that's kind of the sweet spot that we want it to be in anyway. So, like, you know, in tur tournament formats, uh, we're going to have a hard cap at 45 each round. Um, so, you know, like most of the times, uh, if an aggressive deck goes against an aggressive deck, those are going to be the faster games. A controlly deck versus a controlly deck is going to be very slow, especially if, like, I'm influencing your morality scale and you're influencing mine uh, and we're just like going up and down on that. that those those games can take a little bit longer uh, but typically you know sweet spots right in the middle there so uh, is that best of one? Uh, yeah best of one uh, is this a CCG? it is going to be a CCG yes I, um, so you guys are going to have starters and stuff? We are, yeah. Uh, so what we just played with is the Demo Cosm two-player starter pack. How do you fire this game? We're going to uh, get it. Yeah. So uh, it is not for sale at the moment. We're we're in balance and play testing. Um, eventually, uh, I will. I'm. I don't know exactly how I'm plan to distribute or how I'm going to get the finances. I'm actually getting a quote from a manufacturer now so that that will determine um, that will help me determine how I'm going to like pursue it. 
whether you know self finance or go crowdfunding. Um, crowdfunding typically doesn't like CCGs, but if I can get enough of a fan base and I can actually get it manufactured, I might go that route. Uh, but really, a big thing that I'm trying to do right now is audience build um, and test for balance. So one of the things that we're going to do pretty soon is uh, have a digital tabletop simulator um, tournament for a create your own character. Um, so that's one, yeah, that's one of the big things that we want to do. So like you see here, we've got the the comic rule book. Um, so we want the players to be able to, to help uh, shape the world and influence the story. And so a lot of the tournaments and things are going to have story prizes and like create a, create a character events and things like that. Um, so that's a big thing that we want to do. Um, so I want to give my playtesters something cool that they can do while audience building. So I'm offering this uh, create a, a character tournament because I think my playtesters probably would enjoy that. So yeah, if you guys you know wanted to uh, you know be a part of the community, that'd be awesome. Um, we're playtesting, like I said, balance right now, um, and soon we're going to be testing a draft format. Uh, one of our one of my Members, he hasn't actually played the game yet, but he actually coded out um, booster packs for TTS. So, okay. so we're going to be playtesting like draft formats, um, and then I have a co-op mode. I don't know. Did you guys? Did you? Did you guys ever play? Huh? Yeah, uh, like in Magic, they had like Arch Enemy, and and Wow, they had raids. Um, so in this. And this, uh, you know, it's, we call it the cosmic threat, and it's the sands of time, uh, which I was telling you about the the big alien ship that destroys the city. Uh, but what makes our game unique in our mode is that the sands of time is actually playable in the tournament format. Um, so not only can you play it against it in the raid style game, but it's actually you can make your own deck and play it in a tournament. And that was one of the big things that. One of the things that I hated about, you know, those raid decks or the, the arch enemy or stuff like that is like I couldn't I couldn't be those things in standard play, um, and so that's why we went that route. It just means that you kind of have to like scale it, right? Like, right, like when it plays, probably yeah. if it's gonna have more people going against it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, so it does scale and it plays itself. Like, it can be piloted by somebody. That makes it a little bit more difficult if they know what they're doing. Uh, but it actually can play itself because it has effects on it called Sands of Time effects, and basically when you play the cards, it activates those. Yeah. Is that going to be, like, separate? Yeah, it's, it's going to be its own box. Um, you know, you're, you're not going to be having... You're not going to have to collect the, the entire thing. Like, it's going to be its own box, so... You, you, so FFG, you buy the three boxes and you get everything for 150 bucks. Uh, yeah, 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 you call it FFG version of the LCG. Yeah. Yes. Marvel Champions is the game that we've been playing a lot of, and this kind of reminded us about it that we kind of want to do this. Um, and FFG, yeah. FFG is uh, notorious for for doing stuff like that. Yeah. And just. That's like it's 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 hard for I don't know I, I personally have a hard time getting getting over the CCG element of like opening packs and trying to find the cards that you want. Um, so like we played um, Star Wars Destiny, uh, and that was a CCG style game, like yep. collectible game. And then there was we, we 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 went to like third party retailers to like buy to, like try to make it an LCG. Yeah. So like they would buy and just give us everything like. Me and my buddy split it here, and then like then have everything. Yeah, I don't know. It, it, it's, 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 I don't know what your thought process on that is. I'm curious. Yeah. Why you decided to go um, rather than else. So, so if you guys have have uh, been paying attention to Fantasy Flight, you you'll know that um, they're the company that made LCGs kind of famous. They kind of like brought the distribution model onto the scene and and made it big. Um, and even they can't make their competitive LCG models work. Um, I have. Definitely, I agree with you 100. They cannot. I play a lot of their 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 LCGs. It's not competitive at all. 
Um, you know, Ar- Arkham Horror works great. Um, you know, the Marvel Champions is working great. Um, those do have some licenses that people really dig anyway. Um, I think Marvel... I, th- I think I, I personally would much rather play Sentinels of the Multiverse than Marvel Champions. Um, I-, I think it's funner, and I don't have to think as much. Um, but I know a lot of people really like Marvel Champions. Um, it's the deck-building aspect. Like, I've played Sentinels of the Multiverse as well. Yeah, we, they're redoing Marvel Sentinels. Of the, they're, uh, I think they are redoing it. Yeah, they are redoing it on Kickstarter. They're going to fix it up, they said. Oh, man. But it's I do agree like, like Sentinels of the Multiverse and Marvel Champions, they kind of fill similar roles. But yeah. I like the deck building aspect of Marvel Champions, where I don't get that in Sentinels. Right? Sure. Um, now, I do know, you know, like Netrunner, I guess, is still around. That's an LCG or ECG. Um, Vampire oh, just no. Vampire just kickstarted with Renegade. Uh, I think I I I think that'll I I think that'll stick around because the the fan base likes that enough but i've seen so many lcgs like you know small small indie companies launch lcgs and then they never do anything after the core set uh fantasy flight can't keep their competitive lcg models around um i just i've seen it fail so many times and even even when they were successful right like agate agate was a great game i don't know if you guys played agate i loved agate uh and and it was like what two or Two or three years into it, they were like, "Let's redo it and have you reset everything," and that just that pissed me off. Oh, Game of Thrones, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. I, I didn't get the accuracy. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm I'm sorry. Uh, but a lot of but a lot of my research uh, indicates that the re there is a there is a reason that CCGs work. Uh, I understand that reason. I know why it works. You know, it's the thing that you were talking about. You don't like chasing the cards. So that's actually what people like. They There's a dopamine hit when you open, you crack a pack of cards and you hit that, that rare, right? You're like, you're like, oh man, I got this awesome card. Uh, and that's, that's why CCGs work. And I think that's actually why LCGs, the competitive LCGs don't work um, is because you have the, the chase and the cost of a CCG because like I have to crank out $150 for three core sets and then I have to buy the expansion that comes out every month. Right. So like, like there is the thrill that there is the chase of getting everything in the set and it costs me a decent amount to do it, but I don't have the thrill of cracking the pack to see if I got that awesome card. And that's why I think LCGs actually don't work. Um, and I've seen it time and time again. Like I have, I actually, a friend of mine um, came from uh, L5R where well, like we were both super into L5R when it was a CCG. I, I was also big into L5R. That game was too hard for anybody to ever play. <laughs> oh man. Like I, I, I was, I, I was a competitive player, but I never won a tournament. Uh, but I was like super into it. Right. Like the compute, the community is exactly what I want for this game. Like I want the, the ability to impact the story and choose characters and like, you know, make your own stuff. Like I, that's what I loved about uh, L5R. And that's one reason that I, I designed this. Well, he got really into a game called doom town. And that was, a, that, that, so that was a CCG. And then AEG made it into an ECG model. Well, uh, AEG decided they wanted out of the competitive card game uh, business altogether now they still have Smash Up, which is a head-to-head style game, but it's more of a party game. Uh, so, Doom Town was then sold to my friend's company, Pine Box, and they're and they're still running Doom Town now. And that community is just like the L5R community, like super into the game, and they're keeping it going. And he's like one of the only people I know that can keep a small business ECG going. Um, and that's that's the main reason that I've chose to go this route. Like, we this game was a different game like three years ago. We tried to launch it on Kickstarter. Uh, the mechanics were different. The artwork was different. But like all like most of the characters and everything are the same. Uh, and we tried to launch it as an ECG model game. And Kickstarter just doesn't like head to head format deck construction games. It's very hard to to get any amount of funding for them 
unless you're a big company, right? Like Vampire made tons of money, um, but that was Renegade Game Studios with an IP that people love. Um, so in my case, if I'm going to go that route anyway, and people already don't like that format on Kickstarter, then I might as well go with the one that I know actually works. Like if I look at Flesh and Blood as an example, have you guys seen Flesh and Blood? Yeah, so I, I, I agree. I'm not a fan of the actual gameplay, um, but it's a game that came out of nowhere from a company nobody knew, and and, and it, it their secondary market right now is ridiculous. People are paying thousands of dollars for boxes. I mean, it's it's ridiculous. Um, Argent Saga was a, a, a CCG that went on to Kickstarter. The owner... Yeah you know, ran Yu-Gi-Oh tournaments and ARGs and all that stuff. Um, And so he actually got it funded on Kickstarter for a very decent amount. And the only reason that's not around anymore is because bad business model. So like, or like game stores were carrying it. Well, no, no, no. Actually pre COVID they decided to start doing an LCG distribution model. So they were releasing blind booster packs as well as like, fixed card expansions at the exact same time. Uh, they did that? Yes. They did that. Um, yeah, and it, it was ridiculous. It confused everybody, and then it, the interest in that game literally died. Like, as soon as they did that. Um, but... You know, that game would still be around had they not, you know, mismanaged their business practices. Uh, and then... Yeah, I, I think the game would have... would I think the game was fine. Like... Yeah. You know, uh, you know so... so some of, These are some of, some of the main reasons that I've chosen to go this route. Um, you know, I know a lot of board game players... Um, or or even older players that that played C- CCGs in the past uh, move away from a CCG model, but from a, a business standpoint, um, you know, I've got a, I have a lot of things to consider. Like it, if I I, 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 I love how you phrased your answer to this way. You, you've got this like I mean, I, I don't necessarily agree with it because I know what I like, but you're probably right that it's for, for business. It's probably better, you know, and I I, I can. I can respect yeah, I mean, the thing about it is, is like if I wanted to kickstart for you know 250 to 500 copies and not do anything with it, you know, I might release it as an ECG if I could get the funding. But if I want to distribute like as the game that I want it to be, um, and I can actually pull it off, I would much rather it be a CCG, like just from a bus- from a business standpoint. Um, that's something I'm going to have to consider because the core set has, I think it's like 170 cards or something. So it's not a huge core set, right? Um, so I, that's something that I'm going to have to, to, you know, talk to my play testers about, talk to my, um, player base and see what they think at the moment. I'm, I've just got the two player starter. Um, and that's based on, I don't know if you guys played transformers, um, the tr- cool. Yeah. So Transformers. I don't know if you bought the starter pack. Like you got like a two twenty card decks, and uh, both players got the exact same Autobots, um, and everything else was released in their boosters. And that's kind of the distribution model that I've kind of like latched on fo- onto for the moment. Uh, I yeah. don't know if I'll stick to it, but that's kind of where I am for now. Makes sense, yeah. Is there, um, like, a site where I can, like, look at all the cards? Yeah, it's actually, the database is on the Discord. Oh, it's in the Discord itself? Yep. Fine. Yeah, I, 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 don't have a, I don't have a card database website set up at the moment, uh, so my database oh, is... Yep. It just has like what pictures of the 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, I got you. Yeah. Oh, it's cool. I really like the art. Like, it's just like, it's just like the way that that's that's very different. Yeah, that's a very different mechanic. Like, like you, so you're basically playing like a new round every time. Yeah. yeah. The um, and saving cards for future rounds. Like, yes, you draw back up to your six every time, but like, so you can definitely be going after a more valuable target. Yeah, there's definitely a lot going on in this game. It, it, it's also simple enough that it's not very difficult to teach as well. Yeah, so. that was a that was a big thing. So like like I said, uh, the game previously was a different game. And we had this kind of resource management mechanic where you like you when you played the character into play, you would like they had three different choices on them. I don't know, kind of like Pokemon, right? Like Pokemon, you have different actions that the the Pokemon can do, and they can only do it when they when they uh, when you have that much energy on them. Well, like the previous incarnation, each character had three different actions they could do, and you spent different things and it was a lot to take in and so i super simplified it and made it more um what's the word uh i made it more um player streamlined player friendly i like those words yeah, yeah uh, uh familiar i made it more familiar for people yeah definitely i i think i think it works i think it i think it works i uh i i'll definitely try to play and then whenever tournament that you said exists. My friend who sent it over to me, uh, 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 but he, he, uh, he printed out the, the printed the different print play stuff. Uh, he printed out some decks he sent them to Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, custodes, uh, on here he is Custodes. Is that, that again? I don't know his name on this one. Yeah, it's, uh, it's Ian Custodes for Life. Uh, more at least, at least over tabletop. I'm pretty sure he has tabletop. Yeah. 